If you use Home Assistant, have an iPhone and use Apple CarPlay in your car, then this video is definitely for you. You can now bring Home Assistant to your car. So whether that's when you're pulling up to your driveway and you want to open the garage door, or perhaps turning the outside lights on when you get home, or maybe you've forgotten to turn the heating off when you've left the house. You can now control your devices either by areas such as rooms in your home, domains such as lights and switch entities, and even trigger actions as well, which basically allows you to control anything in Home Assistant. So now that I've teased you with what it can do, let me show you how to set it up. Firstly, you need to make sure that you have the latest version of the Home Assistant app on your phone. It needs to be at least version 2024.1 and you can check this by going to Settings, Companion App and then pressing the About in the top left. The next thing you're going to need to do is ensure that the Home Assistant app is visible from within the car entertainment system. To do this, you go to the settings on your phone, select General and then CarPlay. For the next bit, you need to have your phone connected to your car so that you can include the Home Assistant app within the list of apps available to your car. Once connected, select your car and then add the Home Assistant app to the list. So to use Apple CarPlay, it looks like I have to enable Siri. So I'm going to do that now. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. You can change it later in settings. There we go, and we can now see Apple CarPlay on the car, which is great. You should now be good to go and able to access the CarPlay version of Home Assistant from your car. It's worth noting that as of February 2024, this is the first version of this functionality, and so I expect it to get more functionality over the coming months. Having said that, I think it already has pretty much everything you need it to do. We'll come back to the Actions tab in a minute, but firstly I want to show you the Areas tab. This is where it pulls in all of the areas from Home Assistant, and then when you click into the area, it gives you a list of all the devices in that area. Now of course for this to be useful, you need to have been disciplined with your Home Assistant setup, and actually have areas defined for each of your devices. Moving over to the Control tab, you can see that instead of areas, it has a list of different entity types known as domains. All of the common ones are available, but not all of them just yet. Once again, you need to click into the relevant domain and then select the device that you want to control. For me, the areas and the control tab are both useful to have in some cases where you need to turn something on or off that you wouldn't usually expect to from your car. But if you're in your car, then it really needs to be a click of a button to control the thing that you want to control, particularly if you're driving to minimize the distraction. And this is where the actions tab comes in. Actions allow you to fire an event in Home Assistant with the press of a button, either from your phone, from your watch, and now from your car as well. You can then use this event trigger in a Home Assistant automation. You can already create actions from your phone or Apple Watch, so if you've used this functionality before, then you might already see some actions in the list. But if not, then you're going to want to create some actions first. By far the easiest way to do this is to use the Home Assistant app on your iPhone. Go to Settings, Companion App, and then Actions. If you use the Scenes functionality in Home Assistant, then you'll actually see these here as well. If you don't want the scenes to be available as part of your actions, then you can disable those with the Select All toggle button. So press Add to create a new action, and then select that action. You want to give the action a name, and then below that it has two really nice toggle features, whereby you can decide if this action is available for your watch, or for your car. I think these are a really good way of preventing showing too many buttons on your devices. You'll also see a server option which determines which Home Assistant instance the action gets sent to, and I'll come back to this bit later. Set the text, the colours and the icon for the action, and then press save. Remember to enter the display text that you want into the text field, otherwise it won't let you save the action. Then go back to settings and press done. Now that you have an action that you want to perform, we need to create the automation in Home Assistant. Create an automation as usual, but for the trigger you want to select Manual Event and then under Event Type put iOS.action underscore fired and then under Event Data you need to put Action Name and then the name that you gave the action when you created it. I'll put a link in the description to some documentation where it gives you an example in case you get stuck. 
Now you want to create the action for the thing that you want it to do when you press the button. In my case, I have created an action to turn on the outside lights. But before we finish off the automation, we can add some really clever conditions to this automation. When the event is fired, it includes some additional information, including the name of the phone which triggered the automation, as well as whether the action was triggered from the phone itself, an Apple Watch, or from Apple CarPlay. This means that you can get it to perform different actions based on where you triggered the action from, or you could restrict it to only do something if the action was triggered from the car. The only piece that's missing really is that you won't know what car it was triggered from if you drive multiple cars. So the final thing to mention is the last tab called servers. If you have more than one home assistant instance or you have access to your family's home assistant instance then you can switch between these instances and then it will display the actions and the entities that relate to that instance that you've selected. You saw the option earlier that when you create an action on your phone you have to select which home system instance the action relates to. I think that a good addition here would be able to see actions whereby you can trigger actions from different home system instances on the same page and not need to switch between the two. Say if you were travelling from your house to your parents house then you could open your garage door one end of the journey and then there's the other end of the journey without having to go to the server tab and change between the different instances. So that's it really, you could use these actions to toggle devices on and off or you could even use it to send some default notifications to your partner's phone maybe such as I'm stuck in traffic or I'll be home shortly. And if they add more useful functionality in the next couple of releases, I'll leave some information in a pinned comment and probably on my Twitter feed as well. And remember to reference the links in the documentation in the description if you get stuck. Well, that's it for today. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already, liking the video if you enjoyed it, liking the video if you didn't enjoy it, just to help me out. And thanks until next time.